It's common to receive a customer's artwork or find an image online that you need to cut with your vinyl cutter only to find out that it's not a cuttable image. You see, unless you're deliberately searching for a vector image, there's a good chance the image you found is a raster image or bitmap. Your cutter and software need clear instructions when pursuing a cut path. Vector images are composed of a fixed set of shapes that are easy to interpret, while bitmaps are a collection of dots or pixels which don't translate into a clear cut path for most cutters and software. Fortunately, LXI and Flexi include a number of tools with which users can convert most raster images into vector art. Let's look at some of those tools along with their unique specialties. Now, we won't cover all the tools as a couple of them are a bit complex and actually intended for laser engraving. We will, however, cover six neat and helpful tools. So let's bring in our image by clicking File and then Import. And we're going to use this JPEG here. Now, this isn't a terribly messy image, but it is a JPEG, which is a raster image. In fact, when I try to send this to my cutter, notice that the image isn't in my cut plot preview. In fact, none of these images show up in my preview because they're not vector images. Only the words that I typed are in the preview. If I hadn't typed the words and just tried to send the images to cut, I would probably get a warning saying, no cuttable objects. So I need to vectorize these images. Our goal is to turn this into a clean vector image with a clear cut path. So let's go to our menu and click Bitmap and then Vectorize. Now the first tool we want to check out is the basic auto trace tool. After choosing that option, I'll just drag across my image as if I were highlighting it. Immediately the image is auto traced. Now it's hard to tell, but the vectorized image is sitting on top of my original. I am however going to go ahead and grab that original and move it out of the way. And here I find my auto traced vector image. Notice how each of these squares have their own cut lines, and I can select them individually. This comes in handy if you want to change the design a little, maybe give it fewer scales or something. Also, it's a fairly clean trace. Even though the original was a little pixelated, it traced quite well. Again, the auto trace is a mostly reliable tool as long as the image isn't extremely messy or has too many intersecting lines. Now, if you do have a faint or messy image, I recommend using the Bezier tool. It's often the best option for single color designs, especially when the original is jagged or pixelated. In the case of this pic of barbed wire, it's not awful, but it could be better. And of course, the main problem is that it's not a vector image, so it needs to be vectorized. I use the Bezier tool, and with it, the new vector image is placed on top and just needs to be dragged away. Notice the difference here. When I select the original, the red outline is around the whole image, including all of this white space. So our cutter wouldn't see a difference. But when I select my new vector image, my cutter and software see a clear cut path around the true image. And again, this is a really nice outcome. If we zoom in, we'll see that it's so much smoother than the original. Yeah, Bezier has really become the go-to tool for a lot of users, especially if Auto Trace isn't getting the job done. Notice on the music staff here, it's transparent outside of the image, whereas our original has all of this white space within the red outline. Again, the vector image is way cleaner too. It's not pixelated because vector images aren't comprised of pixels. Now, while the Bezier tool does thicken lines and clean up images while it vectorizes, sometimes you need to direct that process a little more. That's what the Enhanced Curves and Enhanced Corners tools do. For instance, when I vectorize using the Enhanced Curves tool on this giraffe image, notice the improvement. Sure, the pixelization is gone, but also look at the small modifications. Specifically, see how hard or sharp this corner's point is on the giraffe's pattern? That same patch of pattern has a softer point here. Or see this point here. Look how it's been rounded on our vector image. Now maybe it's personal preference, but that softness seems more realistic and appropriate for this design. Now look what happens when we vectorize the image again, but this time with enhanced corners. Yeah, see now we have these sharp points, which just seem too rigid and not a natural look for this creature. Now there are certain times when enhanced corners make sense, especially in what would be a man-made design or pattern. In the case of the soccer ball, which is extremely pixelated, these artifacts would probably translate weird if we just did an auto trace. But with enhanced corners, there is a clear geometry to the new vectorized image. Now you may have noticed I adjusted the settings of the enhanced corners tool before using it earlier. 
How you adjust the tolerance, noise suppression, and corner detection setting will be the difference in the nice soccer ball replica we've already made versus something like this. What a mess. Yeah, so you'll want to play with those settings when you apply the Enhanced Corners tool. Alright, we've looked at a couple of ways to vectorize single color images, but what about our multi-color images? Well, I'll go ahead and warn you that the more colors your image has, the more complicated it could become. But if we can consolidate everything to 12 or less colors, LXI should do a good job of vectorizing. One way is by using the Color Trace tool. Now, this image I'm using is a PNG with some transparency, but it's still a raster image that needs to be vectorized. So I go to Bitmap, Vectorize, and Color Trace. I'll now drag my cursor over the image to select it. When I do, Design Central makes some assumptions about how many colors I want to use. Right now it shows three colors, but I can't do that without modifying my design. So watch what happens to my design when I say I'm looking for four colors. Now that's closer to the original, but it's still not quite right. So we'll keep adding colors until we have our original design. And that should be it. Notice when I say six colors, there's no noticeable changes. So I'm going to go back to five colors, and then I'll hit the check mark to apply. Uh-oh, something's wrong, and I think I know what it is. So let's move this one out of the way. We'll copy our original again and apply the color trace. By the way, instead of going through the menu, we can also choose the color trace icon over here. So we apply it again, recognizing five colors. But here's where I messed up earlier. Sure, there's five colors, but the question is, what am I going to do with my white color? See, if a top layer in my design is white and I'm applying it to a white substrate, then I may choose to just leave those areas blank in order to let my substrate or background show through. So I'm going to unclick this white option and check apply. And now I have a nice clean vector version of my color image. And notice how each of these colors are separated so that you can cut them separately. All right, let's look at one more way to vectorize color images. This time I'm going to highlight my image, go to bitmap, vectorize, and color. When I do that, the color vectorization window pops out. And the first step gives me the option of fast, smart, and manual. I'll be honest, I don't see a lot of difference between smart and manual, but fast is seldom as precise as the other two. So I'll leave it as smart, and what I'm going to do is select the different colors I see. I do want to acknowledge the white in this design. Some of this red may vary, even if it's hard to detect. The cool thing is the software won't let me pick the same color twice. So the red in this body must be the same as in the head. But see how the leg here looks a little more shadowed or darker? Let's see if it lets me choose it. Yep, so that red is ever so slightly different than the head and the body. Also the black in the shoe is a little different than the rest of the design. This black is a little darker too. Now don't worry, this doesn't necessarily mean you'll need more layers or colors of vinyl. I'll explain that in a minute. First I'll click Posterize. And what that does is translate the image into as few different tones as possible. Now you may notice the beak changed colors. That's not a huge deal because the software is simply separating colors for you. You're the one who will decide whether to use a canary yellow vinyl or something that's more gold. The software is just making distinctions between obvious differences in color. Now, I'm more concerned about this pink and lavender because I don't see them in the design. I think it may have interpreted the outlines with the shoelaces as purple because the black was just that much different than the other blacks. Let's go ahead and merge colors that are similar to each other. So I'm merging these dark colors that are all close to black. I'll also merge the pink and lavender. Finally, I'll click Vectorize. And I now have a cuttable image that is separated by color. I kind of wish I would have merged the purple shoelace lines with the black. I'm going to try it one more way. Instead of smart, I'll use manual. And look here, I've merged my colors down to four basic colors. I know you only see three, but remember there's a white in there too. So I hit vectorize. 
and it looks good. The beak is still its original color. There are, however, some artifacts in the shoe area I notice. I notice some traces of yellow. You can always clean that up by selecting those artifacts and deleting them. Clearly, there's a little experimentation involved, especially with color vectorization. But again, if you keep your color count down, even if it's by merging colors, you should be able to transform your bitmap into a nice, clean vector image. So there you go, we just covered six different vectorization tools. Auto Trace, Bezier, Enhanced Curves, Enhanced Corners, Color Trace, and Basic Color Vectorization. These tools will allow you to vectorize and cut so many more images and clip art. It's a great feature of your Flexi and LXI software.